3.24 right around the corner hours away hours away i am i am beyond excited there have been so many awesome changes and blight i think is going to be the best it's ever been i have talked to so many people who are excited so many people who are scared and worried and so many people who just like honestly can't wait and you know i fall in that same category i am really really excited for the changes i can't wait to explore all kinds of different things and you know i told i told a buddy of mine today and he was just like i've got this idea it might be stupid i'm like dude it doesn't matter that it's stupid what matters is that you find a way to play and have fun and i encourage you guys with especially with all the new changes and everything coming out just play the game have some fun and figure it out for me i had mentioned that i'm going to be starting Aurobot. i'm going to be doing a bunch of sanctum but i want to spend today and talk about blight now i personally am really excited about blight i can't wait for blight and there have been a lot of blight changes that are Pretty much coming to light and i wanted to talk to you about them today the first big noticeable thing for blight is it says the mycelial swarm notable has been removed pretty much the notable that said and i'll show you actually in game the notable in game that we have that gives us the 50 percent reduced cost of crafting and the nodes that give you five percent chance to gain a free use are pretty much being changed and removed and they're giving us variety of items contained in one of our blight chests to be lucky instead of two percent chance of completing maps this to begin with is huge it's massive we never really wanted mycelial swarm we never really cared about it it was just kind of like a thing that was on the atlas and you you looked at it you did one of these you looked at it you read it you nodded and you're like cool scarabs and you just kind of ignored it and kept going but in this leak since everything's changing scarabs are reworked the tree needs to be updated as well and this tree node and these tree changes are really 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 cool What's really interesting is when we get to the Atlas tree, you'll see that it's really easy to get 100% chance to get Blight, and that's going to be a path that we're going to be taking. We're going to be pairing it with a lot of really cool things. Now, alongside the Atlas tree being changed too, there was new updates to the way Scarabs work with Blight, and to be honest, they're really good. Pre 3.24, we would just take a Scarab. We'd usually grab a Polished Scarab or better. We'd only put it on to put Blight on the map. We put it on to get an extra boss, and we would be really happy. And since we were doing a bunch of indoor maps, you know we pretty much just kind of like didn't really care about anything else because they were indoor maps we only cared about the bosses we weren't splitting lanes we only wanted blight rewards and blight chests and we just kind of like did our thing but now in 3.24 the scarabs have been changed and they're updated and they're 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 really good to begin the first basic blight scarab does nothing hasn't changed everything's still the same it just adds a blight encounter to our map it's pretty much the same thing you look at it you nod you accept its existence and you move on the polished scarab or now the blight scarab of bounty really interesting i like this one a lot it says blight chests in your area have a 20 percent chance to be reopened now if you think about this and you get eight blight rewards and they each have a 20 percent to be opened oh it's pretty damn good I think this scarab is actually insane and you can actually it's limited to two so you can have two 20 percenters which give you a 40 percent chance and like <sighs> oh, dude that's nuts <laughs> that's actually that's crazy oh that's so good it's so good our third scarab blight scarab of oils blight oils found in your map are one tier higher I love this I think this is great as a scarab this is fantastic it pretty much did everything that the sextant did without the downside the old sex that used to be like oh blight oils are one tier higher but things are harder and more miserable and you were like great never using this i suck but now you just put like you put this is mandatory like without a doubt you're farming blight in map mandatory absolutely mandatory absolutely fantastic you you take this every time assuming you know it's not like four billion six hundred and seventy two divines each I think this is really good i like this a lot and the best one for last saving the absolute best one for last this scarab when i read this scarab blew my mind absolutely blew my mind to begin it has up to three additional unique bosses keyword being unique and keyword being bosses which will make sense when we look at the atlas stream enemies on your blade encounter have 100 percent increased life okay they're a little bit more difficult you got me and the real kicker tier 14 blighted maps found in your area drop as blight ravage maps instead i think i read this scarab like five times before my brain was just like wait what i swear to god i read this scarab like five times before my brain was just like hold up wait a minute How, what the what 
So essentially you could do one of these, one of these, two of these, that's four, put your map in, that's five, and just solely focus blight. Just blight. And you have a 40% chance to open up your chest again. All of your oils are ticked up higher. And that map that you ran that gave you like seven tier 13 or better maps, some number of those are just gonna be blight ravaged. The, the idea that I don't have to go into normal blighted maps. I mean, I love normal blighted maps. I'm able to run normal blighted maps. So the idea to me is that when my character is strong enough to farm regular blight in maps at tier 16 level, and those maps have a really good chance of dropping as blight ravage, I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be rich. There's no if, ands, or buts. I'm gonna be rich. The problem is, is like, the, or the next problem I should say, is what map do we run? What are we doing? How are we doing this? Where do we go? And if we go back to the patch notes, we can actually see that if we just search for it, we can see that toxic is a toxic sewer we can see that toxic sewer has been added to the list of maps that are back in rotation toxic sewer is going to be fantastic i believe waste pool is still in so we have toxic sewer we have waste pool we now also have tower tower is also really 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 good you'll have the crimson temple map which will be okay you're like kind of like yeah whatever but uh we have toxic sewer we have waste pool all the other really good ones are are out now you have silo silo is not too bad it's like okay phantasmagoria it's good it's okay but ideally we are going to be doing toxic sewer we are going to be running toxic sewer toxic sewer is going to be our pretty much our home base alongside waste pool and we're just going to have you know a really good time overall a really really good time i'm actually pulling up toxic sewer um right now to double check Okay, it's wasteful. Wasteful has the doctor. Wasteful has a doctor. That we definitely want to do wasteful. We want to do wasteful. Wasteful has the doctor. Toxic sewer is a nice linear layout, though. Toxic sewer is a really nice linear wasteful. Way out. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. Now, if toxic sewer is not in and I misspoke, I'm sorry. I'm like 99% positive because it's not on a list of maps that are removed. So we should be good to go. Now outside of this we know that we're going to open a map we know that we're going to run the highest tier map that we can run we know that we're going to get our watch zones because we want to make sure that we're running tier 16 maps if possible we know that when we do scarabs we're going to be running two blight scarabs of bounty one scarab of oils and one scarab of blooming blooming assuming that it's also not a billion divides <coughs> when you do the blight scarab of blooming you need to make sure that the price on the trade site of maps makes up for the cost of the scarab there is a world where these scarabs are really 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 expensive and i don't want to say that this one's going to be mandatory because there is a world where the scarab is just too costly and it is better to just farm regular blighted maps and sell regular blighted maps but there is a world where like in last league where blighted maps were multi-divines because they were a challenge this does happen quite often and we can make a pretty penny doing this now when in terms of day one you know atlas one doing the atlas there's a couple ways that we can go about this i saw a really cool clip from tie tie killer that explained it and there's some really good stuff from havoc that explains it to you about like how you want to begin your map how you want to progress your map and i'm going to spend the next couple of minutes talking about day one hour like six fresh into maps what do we do now you're going to want to progress your maps you're going to want to build up a map pool Blight will give you a map pool, but before you get to there, you still need to build up a map pool. You still need to start tearing up your maps and you still need to have like the typical stuff. Pre Necropolis, you would take Wandering Path, all the connected drop chance nodes, and you would just be good to go golden. But in Necropolis League now, things have changed. So there's a lot of talk about what the best way to do things is. So from this point on, just assume that this is all speculative. We're not 100% sure. This is just my opinion. We don't know if this is the best way to do things. We are still learning and this is all subject to change. Disclaimer. Now, according to what the information that I read, connected drop chance is good, but it will be better to jam mechanics into your map and to farm maps that way. So the idea is, from my understanding, is to beeline up the middle, take these Kirak nodes that give you percent chance for Kirak. These are being buffed when Necropolis comes out to be 2% chance each. So you get two, four, six, eight, and then you get, I think this is gonna be 6% here. So you get like 14 or 15% chance for Kirak maps. From there, we come straight up here and we get another 5% chance for connected drop chance, which is whatever. And then we get map tier up nodes. So we take these nodes right here from map tier up nodes. This one is kind of like whatever. 
this one is kind of like we don't want this one we we ignore this one and this one we absolutely don't want so like i said this is all speculative of the best way to do this now from here once you do this and you have this set up you can make the choice if you want to put the extra point here for more chance at kirek nodes kirek missions are this node is being completely reworked to give you percent chance for kirek maps and then you get to make the decision do i want to farm scarabs or do i not want to farm scarabs now i have been told that the idea is the best way to do this is to come straight up to unwavering visions unwavering visions at 29 points will get us here and this will give us an additional 20 per atlas points but the downside in unwavering visions is scarabs can't be found the latest interview from ggg with ziz said that scarabs might be plentiful they might be more abundant than we think and the idea is that we should just be using scarabs on everything this is all untested we don't know so the theory is that we should take 29 points get to unwavering vision so you see we come straight up the middle 29 points go here essentially you spend 12 points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 to gain 8. so you click this you go from 29 immediately to 49 and then you put the remainder of the points where you want them towards league mechanics that you want so and these will all be included in the description down below so essentially what i did assuming i go this route is i put points in the shaping of the skies to give me a three percent chance to get an extra map option 15 percent chance for maps to be one tier higher and then another 10 percent here for maps to be one tier higher so you get 15 5 10 this is 25 um 30 35 and then um 45 50 55 60. so you just have 60 percent chance for your maps to tier up higher now one thing to note these nodes right here these three nodes will be dead we're not going to be getting scarabs and anything to do with scarabs is not going to be affected we're not going to find scarabs we're not going to scale scarabs we're not going to look for scarabs the idea is we want to put points into map tier up higher and then we want to put points into the league mechanic or league mechanics that we want to do my first additional free 20 points you see we go straight into blight when you hit 29 points you then immediately have all this tier up no chance which is really good and then you get all of these nodes here for fungal bloom and fungal chance and all of these small nodes here this will right away give you 100 chance to have blight on every map going forward and you are just thrilled out of your mind if blight's not your thing you can you can still take this basic template and then just do whatever you want if you want to do something on the right side of the tree you would put points into here and then go to the right side of the tree if you want to do a different mechanic on the left side of the tree you'd put points and go to a different left side of the tree because we're not scaling scarabs you want to put the next couple of points or next major points into things revolving around blight to attempt to farm blighted maps so that you yourself can get into blighted maps i would not recommend taking epi or immune response right off the bat immune response makes things very very difficult especially if you have a weaker character and a weaker build and you will get overrun not something that you really want to take but i would take this entire wheel here minus uh this node won't be there and these nodes will be updated so you would take this entire wheel here this will give you this wheel will give you a ton of blight chance chests are lucky you'll get more blighted maps to drop and you pretty much just start accumulating your pile of blighted maps and this is really good because if you've ever done blight on day one or blighted maps on day one you know right away that three amber oils and you are just good to go you don't care about ring annoyance you don't care about your character three amber oils build all the towers collect a bunch of currency sell the currency buy upgrades get divines i mean i know for me i'm going to be live searching blighted maps i'm going to be buying and running blighted maps when my duo is afk or when my duo goes to bed i know i'm going to be running blighted maps pretty much non-stop alongside a sanctum so i will just like you be farming and buying blighted maps because i understand that they are very good they are very strong and they give a ton and ton and ton of currency now after you do this part right here i would come up to here i would grab sturdy construction so that if your character is a little bit weaker you have more damage against the towers if you notice that when you do blight in your tier white or your tier one or your white tier maps and your yellow tier maps while you're progressing if the blight is too hard don't do this entire wheel first grab this wheel here mess around see if you like cassius pride or not i'm a personal big fan of it and take this entire wheel first and then go here this wheel just gives you more damage against the monsters it makes them a little bit easier to control and it pretty much just allows you to just kind of like work the lanes and work the route without getting overrun because these nodes here these three nodes here are just gonna give you a ton of mobs and they're gonna be awesome and you're gonna want them and these nodes here are just gonna give you blight chance so you take this after you get this this and this we're going to come up here and we're going to add an additional blight map or blight boss to our map 
we essentially want to start getting bosses into our maps our bosses will be the things that also drop anointed jewelry anointed jewelry is really good because we want to oil extract it later this is the best source of gold oil silver oils opalescence blacks crimsons you name it because it's early in the league crimson oils will sell like hotcakes black oils opalescence all of them will just fly off the shelf you will never have enough oils to sell everything will just disappear right away and you want to make sure that you are farming and selling all of your oils especially as early as possible people will constantly be getting amulets they'll be constantly getting rings they'll constantly need upgrades they will want to change things and this is going to be one of the best ways to get oils on top of that we pair it with this and this will eventually start to give us oil extractors so when we get that nice piece of jewelry that has a gold oil or a silver oil on it we're going to want to extract it and that's going to be a really really big important thing that we make sure that we can pull out the oils that we want so if i get a piece of jewelry that has say gold silver 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 gold gold opal silver gold gold clear amber we want to extract our best chances at gold silver and opalescent oils opalescent star asterisk depending on the price of the oils or depending on the price of the oil extractors you always want to extract gold you always want to extract silver and you want to do this because to my knowledge unless this has changed this league to my knowledge oils are unweighted so when you use an oil extractor it just has a chance of ripping an oil out also this note says oils in your map have a 25 percent chance to be one tier higher when we had the sextant the sextant stacked with this i assume this stacks with the scarab there's no reason for me to believe that this does not stack with the scarab so we're going to use a scarab to tear up our maps whenever we can afford the scarabs and then we're going to use this to go and make our oils a tier higher now you probably or you might be saying to me hey how do i know um Just need a moment to how do i know with my rings and stuff if they're anointed how do i know what's on it what's the best way to go about it can you just show me and if you drop a piece of jewelry and it just says has this freeze bolt tower thing on it just assume what you can do is you can open up awaken poe trade you can click on the hidden tab and it'll show you right away what oils are on the anointed jewelry that falls there are options and ways to set up your filter to show anointed jewelry i think it only works on rings and not on amulets but any anointed jewelry that falls you just use awaken poe trade even while it's unidentified you could check in the hidden tab and it'll show you right away what oils are essentially just on your you know your jewelry now moving forward assuming this node and assuming scarabs don't fall as abundant as i think they are this node will be really great for progressing there is a world there is a world where scarabs are abundant and i mean abundant there is a world where you just start finding low tier scarabs all the time they are dropping in the axe they're dropping in early maps before you hit 29 points you have scarabs for blight beast june you name it you have a scarab for it and I'm talking about the scarab that adds that mechanic to the map so you're going to open your map and you're going to have like mechanic 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 because you have all these scarabs assuming that's the case then I don't know if unwavering visions is worth it me personally I'm going to just evaluate and make a decision when I start filling out my atlas and I encourage you to do the same if you notice that scarabs are dropping in an abundance you notice you have a ton of them and you notice that you want to keep farming scarabs these next couple of planners are for you and probably what you should be looking at essentially we want to do the exact same thing we want to come right up the middle we want to grab all the map tier chance and all the upgrade tier chance but instead of going up to unwavering visions we're just going to come over here and we're going to get fungal bloom because with the idea is we want to have as much blight chance on our map as possible and then we eventually do the exact same thing that we talked about we come down here we get the rest of the blight chance we come up here we get the cassius pride and then we come over here and we get the epidemiology for the map drops so we've set up our atlas we're 54 points in we're knee deep into yellows we're having a good time we have a hundred percent chance to drop blight scarabs are dropping all the time we're constantly using excuse me all of our scarabs that add mechanics to our maps to farm and sustain maps if you don't take the unwavering visions approach and you are dropping scarabs the theory and this is not concrete the theory is that we should be using the basic scarabs to add mechanics to our maps because from what i read and this is the theory that maps are more likely to drop from league mechanics added to maps due to the amount of monsters that you kill and this is subject to change take it with a grain of salt this is not the end of the world this is just what i heard from watching other people and until we get the mechanic until we start testing 
this is just what i'm operating under now assuming that scarabs are in abundant and scarabs are plentiful and we are going to be doing blight we are going to want to add more scarab nodes to our maps and we are going to want to do our best to farm more and more and more scarabs essentially what this means is because we're farming blight and blight bosses are considered unique monsters we can actually target farm scarabs and have our unique monsters have a 200 percent increased chance to drop scarabs pretty much when you run blight and you kill all those monsters all of that loot that those monsters would have dropped comes at the explosion at the end so if we stack our rare monsters or our unique monsters with these chances for scarabs to drop they'll all come out of the explosion so the running theory is, is that if scarabs are plentiful and blight adds a lot of mobs and blight adds unique mobs and our unique mobs have a 200 percent chance to drop more scarabs they'll drop more and more and more and more and more scarabs assuming same thing over here just increase the amount of scarabs that are found in your map and more scarabs that are found in your map so if you're going for like the blight approach like i want to do and you know you want to farm blight and target farm blight and do your waste pools and your toxic sewers and you know that's going to be your thing pairing scarabs with blight will be really really good now these extra scarab nodes or these starting scarab nodes for significant troves and skittering swarms and all that stuff can be taken after this you know the typical blight setup you can get this wheel this wheel this wheel come up here get distilled fungus come up here and get blight swarm and then start adding in your scarab nodes even this node rare monsters in your map have a 50 percent increased chance to drop scarabs per modifier affecting them if we're just adding non-unique monsters here and more non-unique monsters here and non-unique monsters here like that's a lot of unique monsters coming out of blight and if you've ever managed to play with blight or you've ever like done the whole immune response thing you know that is a lot of rares and a lot of mobs and a lot of everything and this node might actually be insane there is a world where this node is cracked out of its mind and then going forward from there you know we just come over here we grab this so that scarabs in your map are less likely or less common varieties and then with the remainder of the points you pretty much the world is your oyster you can finish out the quant wheel here you can come into the middle here you can either come this way for essences you can come this way it doesn't really matter and then because we're doing a blight scarab farm and we kind of like started researching the economy you can start to pick and choose what kind of scarabs that you want to fall do you want to go more likely or cartographer reliquary anarchy pretty much the world becomes your oyster i don't know if i would take this one this node so much with the final map boss because whatever who cares you could take these small ones for more scarabs you could take all these little nodes here for more scarabs to drop like there's a lot of really good options that you could just overall be taking to farm scarabs in your map i don't know what the best way to do this is yet i don't know what the right way to do this is yet but essentially you could just like that's too many points you could just start doing this and you could take less of these nodes once you figure out do you want you know domination scarabs you know once you know what kind of scarabs you want to target farm or what you personally want you can have your atlas go towards that it's going to be really hit or miss and i don't know what the best way to do things is all i do know is i'm really excited to essentially just pick a mechanic farm it for a couple days get some cool data have a good time try a new mechanic and my plan like i said i'm starting the league i'm going to do an aura bot i'm going to go into sanctum and i'm going to farm blight so this is just where i'm at i wanted to share my opinion on it i think it's going to be really good i think blight's going to be the best we've ever seen and i'm i'm looking forward to it if you guys try it and you guys test it and you guys find something better and you want to leave a like a comment come to the discord stop by the live stream let me know i'll be live all weekend with the mechanic or all weekend with the league and you guys just let me know how it goes what's going on and we'll go from there but for now friends i'm gonna uh i'm gonna go do some last minute prep work and get ready for the necropolis league tomorrow stay safe have a happy league start and see you all in the next one